Story 1. Am I the asshole for throwing this girl's pants and underwear out the door? A group of us friends had gathered for a night of drinks and games. We were all familiar faces, except for one girl who came along with one of the guys. I shared a close friendship with the host of the party, and the event was hosted at her parents' place. As the evening wore on and the drinks flowed freely, we found ourselves thoroughly enjoying the festivities. However, my friend and I noticed that the newly acquainted couple had been absent for quite some time. It was clear they hadn't left the premises, so we decided to investigate the situation. My friend wasn't one to seek confrontation, but we felt it necessary to check on them. Upon reaching her room, we couldn't help but overhear their intimate activities. My friend knocked on the door, politely asking them to leave. She wasn't one for confrontation, but we both knew this situation called for intervention. After several minutes passed without any response, I decided to open the door. To my surprise, they were still in bed, engaged in their activities. Frustrated, I raised my voice, instructing them to vacate the room. It was then that I noticed her pants on the floor. So I seized them and promptly tossed them out the front door, into the yard. The commotion caught the attention of everyone at the gathering, and a chorus of laughter erupted as we waited for their exit. Eventually, they emerged, their faces flushed with embarrassment. The girl had his hoodie, hastily tied around her waist, and the room was filled with a mix of amusement and curiosity. The guy, still trying to regain his composure, inquired about the whereabouts of her belongings. I calmly informed him that they were outside and couldn't help but retort that one shouldn't engage in such activities on someone else's bed. With that, they left. Reactions to my actions were divided among the group. Some felt that I had stood up for my friend, who had been disrespected in her own home, especially considering that the girl was essentially a stranger to our group. However, as the night wore on, I heard that the girl had been deeply embarrassed and humiliated even shedding tears, and now wanted nothing to do with our circle of friends. The guy, on the other hand, harbored strong resentment towards me. So, am I the whole? Story 2. Am I the asshole for throwing this girl's pants and underwear out the door? A group of us friends had gathered for a delightful evening filled with drinks and games. Among us was a new face, a young woman who had come along with one of the guys. The party was being hosted at the home of my very close friend. As the hours passed and our glasses emptied, the atmosphere grew more jovial. However, as the night wore on, my friend and I noticed that the new couple had been conspicuously absent for quite some time. We were certain they hadn't departed, so we decided to investigate, knowing well what might be unfolding. Quietly, we made our way through the house until we reached her bedroom. The unmistakable sounds inside left no room for doubt. My friend, who wasn't particularly fond of confrontation, summoned the courage to knock on the door, urging them to exit. After several minutes with no response, I decided to take matters into my own hands. Upon opening the door, we were met with an unexpected scene they were still in bed, engrossed in their intimate activities. I raised my voice, insisting they leave the room immediately. It was then that I noticed her pants lying on the floor. Without a second thought, I seized them and tossed them unceremoniously out the front door and into the yard. Laughter and incredulous murmurs spread among the other partygoers as we waited for the couple to emerge. Eventually, they sheepishly stepped out, their faces flushed with embarrassment. She had hastily tied his hoodie around her waist, attempting to cover her exposed state. Laughter once again echoed through the room. But the guy couldn't help but ask about her missing clothing. In response, I calmly informed him that they were outside, earning myself a less than appreciative label. He called me out for my actions, to which I retorted, well, don't engage in such activities on someone else's bed. With that, they left, their exit accompanied by a mix of amusement and disapproval. Opinions among the partygoers were divided over my reaction. I believed I had acted in defense of my friend, who had been disrespected in her own home, especially by a girl who was essentially a stranger to the group. However, later on, I heard that the girl was profoundly embarrassed, humiliated, and even shed tears. She wanted nothing more to do with our circle of friends while the guy remained irate with me. So, the question lingers, was I out of line? Story 3. Am I the asshole for telling my ex-wife not everyone is a self-centered BH like you? I was married to my ex-wife, Kelly, for a solid 15 years. During that time, we were blessed with two wonderful children, aged 16 and 10. However, our marriage took an unexpected turn when we divorced seven years ago. Kelly decided to leave because I had lost my leg in a tragic car crash. 
I had been the primary breadwinner, and with a toddler at home, she felt overwhelmed. Unable to care for us both. I don't want to cast blame, that's just the backstory to this tale of my life. Fast forward to the present day, and I'm now happily married to my wife, Shay, for two years. Not only that, but Shay and I are eagerly anticipating the arrival of our first child together. Shay has been incredible. She helps me raise my two older children, and she's everything my ex. Kelly was not. However, Kelly seems unable to let go of the past. She frequently makes comments about the age difference between Shay and me, labeling it as aired flag. She keeps warning me to be cautious, reminding me that I'm a 45-year-old amputee who will soon have to care for an infant. She questions whether I'm up to the task and whether Shay is willing to handle it. One evening, Kelly pushed my patience to its limit. She told me that I better have a backup plan, just in case things didn't work out. I snapped and uttered some harsh words, saying, not everyone is as self-centered as you. Naturally, Kelly was furious. She promptly brought my kids home, even though it was supposed to be my week to spend with them. I tried calling and texting multiple times because I just wanted to see my children. That night, Kelly sent me a lengthy text, expressing her disbelief that I could say something like that to the mother of my children. She claimed she was only warning me about the potential challenges of my relationship with a younger woman and how deeply I had hurt her feelings. I've yet to respond to Kelly's message but my wife and I are eager to reconcile and see my kids. Shay believes I should swallow my pride and apologize. So, am I the one in the wrong here? Story 4. Am I the asshole for telling my ex-wife not everyone is a self-centered BH like you? I, 45M, was married to my ex-wife, Kelly, 45, for 15 years. We share two wonderful children, aged 16 and 10. Our paths diverged seven years ago when we divorced. She made the difficult decision to leave because of a life-altering car crash that cost me my leg. I had been the primary provider for our family, and with a toddler at home. She felt she couldn't care for both of us. I'm not here to criticize her for that. It's just the backdrop to the story. Now, I find myself in a new chapter of life, married to my wife of two years, Shay, 32. We're eagerly anticipating the arrival of our first child together. Shay has been an incredible source of support helping me raise my two older children who stay with us every other week. She possesses qualities my ex-wife did not. Kelly frequently comments on the age difference between Shay and me, labeling it aired flag and urging caution. I've always brushed these remarks aside since my interactions with Kelly are limited to drop-offs and pickups. However, ever since she learned about our impending addition to the family, she has persisted in questioning my ability to handle fatherhood again at 45 with the added challenge of being an amputee. She wonders aloud if Shay will tolerate it. Tonight, Kelly crossed a line when she told me to have a backup plan, just in case. My patience wore thin, and I retorted with words I now regret. I called her a name, and Kelly retaliated by abruptly bringing my kids home. Despite it being my designated week with them, I made multiple attempts to reach out through calls and texts because I desperately wanted to see my children. That night, Kelly sent me a lengthy text expressing her disbelief that I could say something so hurtful to the mother of our children. She claimed she was merely offering a warning about the potential challenges of being with a younger woman and how deeply I had wounded her feelings. I haven't replied yet, but my wife and I are eager to reconnect with my children. Shay suggests I swallow my pride and apologize. Am I the one in the wrong? Story 5 Am I the asshole for telling my ex-wife not everyone is a self-centered BH like you? I, 45M, was married to my ex-wife, Kelly, 45, for 15 years. We have two children together, aged 16 and 10. We divorced seven years ago when she left me because I lost my leg in a car crash. I had been the primary provider for our family, and we had a toddler at home, making it difficult for her to care for us both. I'm not here to criticize her for that. It's just part of the backstory. Now. I am happily married to my wife of two years, Shay, 32. We are expecting our first child together. And she's been incredibly supportive in helping me raise my two kids since I have them every other week. Shay is everything my ex wasn't, and I couldn't be more grateful. However, Kelly never seems to let go of the past. She often makes comments about the age difference between Shay and me, calling it aired flag, and warning me to be cautious. I've always brushed her remarks aside since I only have to see her during drop-offs and pickups. But ever since she found out about the pregnancy, 
She's been relentless in reminding me that I am a 45-year-old amputee about to care for an infant. She questions whether I'm sure I can handle it and if Shay will put up with it. Tonight, during one of our exchanges, Kelly went too far. She told me I better have a backup plan, just in case. I snapped and said, not everyone is as self-centered as you. Kelly got angry and brought my kids home, even though it was supposed to be my week. I tried calling and texting multiple times because I wanted to see my children. Instead, that night, she sent me a long text about how she couldn't believe I could say something like that to the mother of our children. She claimed she was just warning me about what might happen with such a younger woman, and how deeply I had hurt her feelings. I haven't responded yet, but my wife and I want to see my kids. She believes I should just swallow my pride and apologize. Am I the jerk? Story 6. Am I the asshole for telling my girlfriend S maybe isn't for her? I, male, 23, have been in a relationship with my girlfriend, female, 23, for two years. And we've known each other for four. We initially met in college, and after graduating, we decided to move in together. When we first started dating, my girlfriend was a bit overweight, but over time, she has become obese. We used to enjoy going on walks, hikes, and working out together. However, over the past year, she has become less active. While I have continued to maintain an active lifestyle due to my physically demanding job, she, on the other hand, has a desk job. Her weight gain has accelerated in the last six months, with her putting on about 100 pounds during this period. The primary reason for this is her habit of getting takeout for both lunch and dinner. While her weight gain doesn't bother me, as I love her for who she is, I do miss our outdoor activities, but we still find ways to spend time together. Now, here's where the real issue comes in. Our intimate life has become somewhat irregular. We can go months without being intimate, followed by weeks of consistency. I'm usually the one who initiates it. Since my girlfriend's weight gain, she has started wearing sweaters during intimate moments. While I'm glad she feels comfortable, I used to be able to touch her underneath the sweater. But she stopped allowing that. This change has made me lose interest in being intimate with her because I want to be close to her. Not just her attire. So, I stopped initiating it for this reason, and it took her almost three weeks to notice. When she finally initiated intimacy, I politely declined, explaining my discomfort with the situation. She got upset with me and told me she's insecure, and I shouldn't make her feel punished for it. I suggested the possibility of faking it, but she declined saying that intimacy should happen without me touching her or seeing her. Here's where I think I may be in the wrong. I told her that maybe intimacy isn't for her if she can't let me in emotionally. This upset her. And she accused me of being inconsiderate and reminded me that she still has needs despite the changes in her body. I suggested self-pleasure as an alternative, which is what I do when intimacy isn't happening for extended periods. She got upset, expressing her desire to be intimate with me. She then left for a few hours, ignoring my texts to come home and talk it through. When she returned, she asked me to sleep on the couch, and I complied. The following morning, she left before I woke up and didn't respond to any of my texts. I left work early and came home, but she was still not there. When I asked her whereabouts, she informed me that she was having dinner with her sister and would text me when she was ready. I feel that her actions, not responding to my texts and making me sleep on the couch, are an overreaction. Am I in the wrong in this situation? Story 7. Am I the asshole for not changing what I am doing for dinner at my wedding, even though my sister is upset about it? I'm getting married this summer, and my fiancé and I have decided to have a buffet for our dinner reception. The caterer we hired is unique because they donate all uneaten food after an event to local shelters, ensuring it doesn't go to waste. This philosophy is one of the reasons we chose them. We love the idea of minimizing food waste and appreciate that our caterer collaborates with charities to address this issue. However, there's some turmoil within my family regarding this choice. My sister is upset and so are my parents. They've asked me to reconsider and switch from a buffet-style dinner to a plated one where each guest is served their own meal. Their main concern revolves around my sister's struggle with obesity and overeating. She feels that a buffet would be too tempting for her making it difficult to control her portions or resist going for seconds. My parents are firmly in agreement with my sister's request. In fact, they didn't stop at just asking. They told me I have to make this change. It's important to note that my parents are not contributing financially to our wedding expenses. 
Despite this, they attempted to persuade my fiancé after I'd already declined my sister's request, which left me quite upset. Considering the situation, I'm even contemplating not inviting them to the wedding at all, even if I did want to change the caterer. It's worth noting that we've already put down a non-refundable deposit, and our wedding is just three months away. I'm struggling with this dilemma because I don't believe my sister should have the final say in determining the type of dinner we have at our wedding. Do you think I'm in the wrong here? Story 8. Am I the asshole for not changing what I'm doing for dinner at my wedding even though my sister is upset about it? I'm getting married this summer. And my fiancé A and I have made a decision about our wedding dinner. We're going with a buffet. The catering company we've hired has a wonderful policy of donating all uneaten food to local shelters after an event, ensuring nothing goes to waste. This commitment to reducing food waste aligns with our values, and it's one of the reasons we chose them. However, not everyone in my family is thrilled with our choice. My sister, who has struggled with obesity and overeating, is particularly upset. She's worried that a buffet will be too tempting for her, leading to overindulgence. She feels a plated meal would provide better control over her portion size, eliminating the temptation to go back for seconds or more. My parents share her concerns. After I firmly declined my sister's request for a plated dinner, my parents intervened and insisted that I change our plans. It's important to note that they aren't contributing financially to the wedding. In fact, they even approached my fiancé after I'd already declined, which left me incredibly frustrated when I found out. We've already put down a non-refundable deposit and the wedding is only three months away. I'm now contemplating not inviting my parents to the wedding at all. It's not about the buffet versus plated dinner debate. It's about the disrespect and interference in our wedding plans. I believe that my sister should not have the final say in what kind of dinner we have at our wedding, especially when it contradicts our values and commitments. Am I wrong in feeling this way? Story nine, am I the asshole for not changing what I am doing for dinner at my wedding? even though my sister is upset about it? I'm getting married this summer, and my fiancé A and I have made a decision about our dinner plans. We've chosen to have a buffet, and there's a meaningful reason behind this choice. The catering company we've hired has a wonderful policy of donating all uneaten food from events to local shelters, ensuring it doesn't go to waste. This commitment to minimizing food waste aligns perfectly with our values, and it's one of the reasons we chose them as our caterers. However, this decision has caused some tension in my family, particularly with my sister and my parents. My sister, who has been struggling with obesity and overeating, expressed her concerns about the buffet-style dinner. She believes it will be too tempting for her, and she prefers a plated meal where her portion is controlled, eliminating the possibility of going back for seconds or more. She feels that even if someone makes a plate for her at the buffet, the temptation will still be there. My parents share her concerns and they've been pressuring me to change our dinner plans to accommodate my sister's wishes. It's important to note that my parents are not financially contributing to the wedding, and they even approached my fiancé A after I initially declined their request. I was taken aback and quite upset to learn that they had gone behind my back, confronting my fiancé about this issue after I had already expressed my decision. At this point, I'm seriously considering not inviting them to the wedding at all. To complicate matters further, even if I did want to change the caterer, We've already placed a non-refundable deposit, and our wedding is just three months away. I find myself torn between my sister's request and our commitment to minimizing food waste. I don't believe my sister should have the final say in what kind of dinner we have at our wedding, especially given the circumstances. But I'm also feeling the pressure from my parents, who are equally adamant about this change. It's a difficult situation, and I'm struggling to find a solution that will make everyone happy. Am I wrong in my stance on this matter? Story 10. Am I the asshole for saying I won't pick my nice up from school anymore if my brother and SIL keep being like this? Let me share with you a story about family bonds and the delicate balance between helping out and setting boundaries. I'm a 24-year-old woman and my family, consisting of my parents, my mom, and my dad, plays a crucial role in the lives of both of my brothers. Unfortunately, deaths in their respective families have left them relying heavily on us for childcare. We don't mind it at all. In fact, we adore their kids and cherish the time we spend with them. However, as the saying goes, give them an inch, and they take a mile. Recently, they approached us, asking for an extra day of childcare each week. My parents, 
who had been graciously providing support, expressed their concerns about managing the added responsibility. That's when my brothers started with the argument that they couldn't afford childcare and how it might impact their children's pleasures and preferences. It's important to note that one family's income exceeds 130,000 pounds annually, while the other brings in around 80,000 pounds to 90,000 pounds. Childcare is undeniably expensive, but both families are financially comfortable. Despite this, they continue to push for more help. Now, I find myself picking up my niece from the family earning 130 pounds. Zero plus per year from school for a couple of days. Their previous childcare arrangements fell through and they couldn't manage. I don't mind doing it. I absolutely adore her. However, she can be quite a handful. Not having children of my own, I quickly become exhausted after a few hours. I appreciate the peace and quiet when she eventually goes home. Lately, my brothers have been dropping hints to me, expressing how exhausted they are and how they dislike the morning school run. Essentially, they are trying to persuade me to let my niece sleep over at my place tomorrow night and again on Tuesday night. This would mean I have to wake up an hour earlier for work and arrive late because I need to drop her off at school, which is a 20-minute detour from my office. I decided to set some boundaries and warn them that if they didn't stop pushing, they would need to find alternative arrangements for the school run. Their reaction was anger and frustration, claiming that I might eventually leave my niece confused, upset, and alone at school because I couldn't be bothered to pick her up. Of course, I would never leave her alone at school, but the truth is, I don't particularly enjoy it when she sleeps over. It demands a lot of energy, disrupts my routine, and eats into my precious evening hours. I understand that having my own kids might change my perspective, but for now, I'm content without them. What bothers me most is that my brothers seem to have an expectation that I'm always available to help, without considering the toll it takes on me. They never contribute to after-school or breakfast clubs, and whenever they want a night away, they assume I'll provide free babysitting. I've even had instances where, after babysitting, I needed a ride home, and my sister-in-law simply called a taxi for me, expecting me to foot the bill. Their usual response is that they owe me one, but what could they possibly owe me? When I babysit at their homes, I bring my own dinner and snacks, and all I ask for is a glass of water. I've never been paid for my efforts, and even if I had children of my own, I doubt they'd be in a position to babysit in return. At 24, I'm trying to build my own life, and it's frustrating that they seem to take and take without considering the impact on my own aspirations and well-being. This situation has left me feeling a bit annoyed and compelled to reassess the boundaries in our family dynamics. Story 11. Am I the asshole for saying I won't pick my nice up from school anymore if my brother and SIL keep being like this? In my family, we've always been there for each other especially when it comes to childcare. I'm a 24-year-old female, and my parents, my mom, and dad. And I have always stepped in to help my two brothers with their kids. They've had some hardships on the other side of their families. So we've been the dependable support they needed. Now, don't get me wrong. We absolutely adore their kids and cherish the time we spend with them. But, you know, sometimes when you extend a hand, people tend to take the whole arm. So, recently, they asked for an extra day each week to help them out with childcare. My parents, with all their love, explained that they weren't sure if they could manage it. That's when things got a bit complicated. You see, my brothers started with the we can't afford childcare argument. They mentioned how unfortunate it would be if their little ones had to give up things they enjoy because they had to allocate more funds to childcare. But here's the kicker. One family brings in over £130,000 a year while the other clocks in around 80 pounds, 90,000 annually. So, yeah, they're well off. Childcare, no doubt, can be pricey. But, let's be honest, they're not struggling financially. I've found myself picking up my niece from the wealthier family's home because their other childcare plans fell through. It's not a problem. I love her to bits. However, taking care of her is no walk in the park, and since I don't have kids of my own, it can be pretty exhausting. After a few hours, I'm usually ready for a power nap, and I genuinely appreciate my peace and quiet when she heads back home. Now, my brothers are dropping hints like they're playing a game of guess what we need. They're claiming exhaustion, dreading the morning school run, and essentially trying to coax me into agreeing to have her sleep over tomorrow night and again on Tuesday night. It's a lot more work, mind you. It means I have to wake up an hour earlier for work 
and will be late due to dropping her off at school, which is a solid 20-minute detour from my office. I finally put my foot down and told them that if they don't stop, they'll have to find an alternative solution for the school run. Needless to say, they're furious. They claim that I might eventually leave my niece confused, upset, and alone at school because I can't be bothered to pick her up. Let me be clear, I'd never do such a thing. But I can't deny that I find it rather inconvenient when she sleeps over. She's a handful, and I treasure my own routine and evening solitude. I know things will change if I ever have kids of my own. But right now, that's not in the cards for me. It's just disheartening because it often feels like they're always taking, without giving much in return. They don't contribute to after-school or breakfast clubs. When they want a night out, they automatically expect me to babysit for free. I've looked after my nieces before, needed a ride home, and my sister-in-law simply hailed a taxi and expected me to foot the bill. They always say they owe me one, but what can they possibly owe me? When I babysit at their homes, I bring my own dinner and snacks. I rarely get any compensation, and even if I did have my own kids, I doubt they'd return the favor. I just can't help feeling a bit frustrated that they expect so much from me, especially when I'm 24 and trying to carve out my own life. Story 12. Am I the asshole for saying I won't pick my nice up from school anymore if my brother and SIL keep being like this? In my family, there's a shared understanding when it comes to childcare. It's not a burden. We genuinely adore spending time with my brother's kids. However, like the saying goes, give them an inch, and they take a mile. You see, both of my brothers heavily rely on our family, which includes me, a 24-year-old female, my mom and my dad, for childcare. Unfortunately, there have been losses on the other sides of their families that have made them depend on us even more. Recently, they approached my parents with a request for an extra day of childcare each week. My parents, in all honesty, felt they couldn't handle it and politely declined. That's when my brothers started with the guilt trip. We can't afford childcare. It's a shame X might have to sacrifice things they enjoy because we have to spend more on childcare. Let me clarify something here. One of the families brings in over 130,000 pounds a year, while the other makes around 80,000 pounds to 90 pounds. Zero a year. Childcare is undoubtedly expensive, but they are both financially comfortable. So, as the middle ground, I often find myself picking up my niece from the family earning 130 pounds, zero plus annually from school. It happens on those days when their other childcare plans fall through, leaving me to the rescue. I don't mind. I absolutely adore my niece. But let's be honest, she's a handful. Having no kids of my own, I do get tired after a few hours. I cherish my peace and quiet when she's gone. But now my brothers are dropping hints implying that they are exhausted and don't enjoy the school run in the mornings. Essentially, they are trying to persuade me to let my niece sleep over tomorrow night and again on Tuesday night. Let me break it down. It's a ton more work for me. It means I have to wake up an hour earlier for work. And I'll be late to the office because I have to drop her off at school, which happens to be 20 minutes in the opposite direction. I had to put my foot down. I warned them that if they didn't stop with the hints, they would need to find alternative arrangements for the school run. They got furious, claiming I would leave my niece confused, upset, and alone at school because I can't be bothered to pick her up. Let me be clear I would never do such a thing. But truth be told, I don't enjoy it when she sleeps over. It drains me, disrupts my routine, and encroaches on my precious evening time. I know things will change when I have kids of my own, but for now, I don't want them. It's this feeling that they constantly take and take and Tate Dane bothering me. They never contribute to after school or breakfast clubs, and if they want a night out, they expect free babysitting from me. I remember one time when I watched one of my nieces, and after it was all done, my sister-in-law just called a taxi for me and expected me to foot the bill. Sure, they say they owe me one, but what can they possibly owe me? When I babysit at their houses, I even bring my own dinner and snacks. The most I consume is water. I don't get paid, and even if I had kids, they'd probably be too exhausted to babysit. I can't help but feel a bit frustrated by their expectations, especially at 24, when I'm trying to live my own life.